All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2020 3D printing update from yours truly, Shern EP Digital, the engineer pioneer, founder of the New Age Nerds Corporation, and a representative of Interactive 3D and Office Systems. So this is a collaborative effort of two different sizes of spectrum, and I'm going to let you know that a little bit later. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive into it. First, being about us. We are experts in printing and prototyping. And I mean experts. I have been in the as a hobbyist since 2010 when the first rep wrap printer came out. I've always followed the industry, but I first got my hands on it since then. And I've tweaked and hacked mine all the way to being able to produce even more stuff. So I know all of the inner workings and outer workings of 3D printers. And of lately, I've gotten my hands on the industrial 3D printers. And the technology, of course, is still the same. And I'll show you all the differences later. Um, again, started from hobby, all the way up to industry. And we are 3D printer sales as well. We offer service and training, and that's CAD design, how to get your designs into the 3D printer, how to print quality 3D prints and that's on a variety of 3D printers and we are located in Houston, Texas. Um, we could definitely, if you're not in Houston, we could definitely point you in the right direction in your locale so if you want to reach out let us know. And we are authorized 3D systems reseller. So in this presentation I'm going to do an intro and an update to 3D printing all from the beginnings all the way up to the 2020 and that's a uh, on the industry, the evolution of the quality, speed, and size of the materials, what to do with them, the types, the FDM, SLA, SLS, and metal, what's the difference between them, the levels from hobbyist to mass manufacturing, post processing, been some issues with that, what's the difficulty within them, who can benefit, what to watch out for, and where to get them. And it seems as if lately everybody has a 3D printer. But where did it all start? 1986, a guy named Chuck Hill came up with the first 3D printer. Sort of. There's a few people, two people that developed it before him or patented it before him. But the, end, the companies that they worked for decided that 3D printing wasn't a good business move. <laughs> Go figure. Billions of dollars later. Uh, even back then they thought it wasn't worth it. It was too expensive or so. So he started in 86, but they didn't release their official production unit until the uh, early 90s, around 92. And by that time, in 1998, two more different types of 3D printing manufacturers or inventions came out. And that would be for the FDM version and the SLS version by two totally different organizations, two totally different people. Now, those first three juggernauts. The STL, developed by Chuck Hill, who started the company 3D Systems, which is still in today. Scott Crump of Stratasys started Stratasys, which is still in business today. Now, between those two, you would have the two, top two 3D printing, 3D printer manufacturers in the world. Now, especially to the end consumer, as well as a lot of the manufacturing. And you'll see uh, later on, because even in the uh, SLS, the uh, Carl Decker DTM, well, Stratasys bought them out. And between 3D Systems and Stratasys, they just keep buying up all the different smaller 3D printing companies to where it's mainly just them two today. Now, about 1999, they started and successfully started printing bio printing organs. So that is very much possible because they have done it multiple times. And it started in 99 uh, from a, a Lake Forest University. And around the same time, they started doing 3D printing and um, metal 3D printing. And that's about the 99 still experimental, which is leading all the way up to 2005 or between 2005, 2009. And that will be the explosion that everybody has I guess remember recently um, that's not the beginnings of the inventions of 3D printers 
That explosion is because, well, 2009, the patents from the 1980s, well, they expired. So all of the STL, FDM, and SLS uh, patent intellectual property is now public. Therefore, everybody can use and produce that technology. So from the rep wraps 2009 and on, you see a lot of different 3D printers because the technology is open. But that doesn't stop the top tier, guys, because um, 3D Systems and Stratasys still buying up all of the little companies that are coming about with all of those cool printers. And that leads us all the way till now to which the 3D printers today are phenomenal. You can see Clip Carbon 3D in which that ball, he was able to print that in less than like two minutes as he was giving his speech on stage. They're 3D printing houses. You see that robot down there? I've seen a video with two robots printing a bridge together. So there is absolutely nothing that cannot be done with 3D printing going in the future in terms of producing different types of materials. So, again, what can anybody do with them? Damn near anything. Rather than, you know, not just parts, manufacturing parts, what have you, also medical. The medical prints materials have come so far. Again, it's about 30 years 3D printing materials had time to develop to where the materials available today are very, very wide and you know highly engineered, affordable, to where you can make anything. You can make toys, parts, plastic parts, metal parts, composites, uh, fiber, art projects. You can see a few large-scale art projects. There is every material out there in 3D printing with more being developed now and more different cases of what to do with them developed every day. As of recently, out of nowhere, you could 3D print face masks. And pretty soon, you're gonna be able to print more things dealing with this uh, COVID-19. So you can see where they're all, it will always uh, be in use, be in need. So the different types is what a lot of people ask. What is the difference between FDM, SLA, and SLS? Now, between those three are the top three. There are a lot more, and I'll show you that in a second. But these are the main three of out of all of the printers you see on the market today. Now, FDM is Fused Deposition Modeling. Now, that is where you got the little filament that you see here. And that filament is fed through a little heater and it's melted through and extruded on a little base. And they go layer by layer, just printing little lines. Stereolithography, on the other hand, you get a little puddle of photovoltaic well, material, meaning it reacts to light. So you got a glass dish with a light reacting material. Beneath that dish, is a mirror and a laser. The mirror moves in order to get the laser to go in different directions on that uh, glass plate. And when the laser hits the plate, which goes through and you know reacts with the polymer in that bowl, it hardens it. So again, from the bottom side, layer by layer, it you know creates a solid layer that it prints, and then. After that layer, it pulls it, separates it, and prints another layer. So it's able to build upside down, as you've seen a lot of those. How does it do that? It's because the laser is reacting and hardening the resin that's right close to the gla uh, glass. All right? Selective laser centering is pretty much the opposite to the stereolithography, in which you got a laser, you know, goes through a lens in order to focus it. And that laser goes through, again, another mirror. And it's a very, very, very powerful laser to where it is able to melt powder metal. So when it comes to metal printing or even uh, um, plastics as well, it could do plastics, uh, any other composites, it'll melt it down and you know, fuse it, like almost like a little line of just melted material. And it does that. Again, the same as the uh, FDM, but it does that line by line, layer by layer. And as the as it prints one layer, 
it drops the bed and then it scrapes in you know a layer just scrapes a film of more material over top and then it repeats the process of melting it on top so those are the three main now with that there are way more than just three between stereolithography being the first then how they do the different lighting for different stuff but this is a cool little infographic to show all of the different variations and there's more than a dozen so between continuous digital light processing uh, for example on the um, SLA actually it doesn't actually have to be a laser on the some of the later models of the SLS they don't use a plain laser pointer they are using laser projectors so they're just shining a full image laser image onto the bottom side of that glass bowl makes it a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster you can look at this later this is just a um, a good visual for showing all of the different methods and technologies used for the various types of 3D printers as well as the companies. Now this will be provided to you on the uh, presentation. I will give you this uh, presentation. So this is definitely a good infographic for you. Now going back. All right, so out of everything, what are all of these 3D printers? Which ones should you get? What brands are out there? Who's trusting? What are, how much do they cost? What are the differences between all of them? And it all has to do with the level of the printer. Uh, the bottom level, which you know has been industry called nicknamed, rep wrap for a replicator I don't know what the wrap is but it's a replicator is to replicate other stuff now that's on the very 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 low end almost free end because those little um, rep wraps are supposed to make other rep wraps therefore making the overall manufacturing of little things a whole lot cheaper was the goal so you see a lot of these hobby rep wraps everywhere and that's the bottom of the bottom of 3D printing. Now, you get a little bit higher, as you can see with the Cubex. I know I started with the Bits from Bytes, which is the predecessor from the Cubex. Okay. Seems as if there's a, a little bit of a lag. So if you text something there, just know that I'll see it. But give me a time to respond. So I just saw that you asked, what is STL? So hopefully I answered that. And I'll continue on. If I did not answer it, uh, text it, and I for sure will jump back on it. But continuing with the um, levels of 3D printing. So rep wraps usually go from about $100 to about $1,000. On average, I would say at $300, you should get a very good printer. And take it from me, yes, you, uh, nothing more than $300. If you spend about $800, you should be jumping into the range of a Cubex or a uh, MakerBot replicator. Now MakerBot is very, very, very popular. Um, in damn near all the public schools, you're gonna see a MakerBot because they are very easy and they are very, very high quality, very high quality. Very, um, uh, let's see, I don't wanna, I wanna say complex, but it can handle some very good complexities. It is, it's, it's a very simple machine to operate but it could handle some very complex parts. I've seen it. As you can see right there, some very large things that, that can be functional. The Cubex could, and that was like the largest of the hobby range of printers, uh, but the Cubex is no longer supported by 3DS, uh, mainly because uh, they're trying to push their new stuff, which is the uh, figure four. And I'll go over to figure four later. And you can see in the back there, the this is the form labs you've seen a lot of these printers uh, being advertised and that is SLS um, so yeah when you, could, when you think about SLS I'm sorry not SLS SLA which is stereolithography when you think about that um, think about form labs so you could get that visual of it's just 
you know, pulling like this stuff up out of some invisible liquid, it seems like. Um, but it's just a projector, <laughs> a, pro a laser projector shining on a glass plate of liquid on the inside. And it's just building upon layer upon layer. And as of lately, they've been able to get that faster. And leading me to the figure four, which is this standalone here. And they've put uh, 3D systems have put together a very good package with that machine. And that has, I would say, is the fastest printing machine to date. We are talking four inches per hour of a six inch base. So you're talking just quickly building something up with the highest and finest quality. Now with the laser, that's the thing with the SLA, stereolithography, it has the highest resolution you could get on a 3D printer. I know with the FDM, when it does a little filament, you can get some surface um, roughness or what have you, but with the SLA, that laser, on yeah you could get hairline uh features uh you could control the surface finish on any part with an sla printer and i would recommend the uh, figure four the form labs it is a good printer but it's small that's the only difference and i don't still don't think it's as fast as a uh, figure four now on the higher side you know, for those printers, you know, going back five to fifteen thousand is what you're looking at for those type of printers. Now, above that, you're going to get into the mass manufacturing, because before that was like mid industrial, light industrial. The big boys on the far right, uh, of course, the Figure Four. If you can combine, the cool part about it is you can combine them together in a series to make a mass manufacturing line in which you could produce a lot of parts. And that's the figure four system that 3DS has. Uh, other companies have a similar system with similar machines. Um, currently, 3DS, per the specs, fastest with the highest quality. Now, Carbon, these guys have come out of nowhere. In a few years, they have, this is where the cool part of what you can do with, you know, the 3D printing technology in which you don't really have to start from the beginning to invent a new 3D printer. What Carbon did since the SLA, FDM, and the SLS, all those patents expired. So you could use them. So Carbon, those inventors, they took the SLA, how that was, and they noticed that it could get a good quality, but because it had to separate from the glass every time, it that bottom layer gets, um, it's not as smooth, it's not as good as the surface finish, as well as the speed at which you you print because you have to rip it you have to let it uh cure a little bit and then rip it from the base and then bring it down to do another layer now carbon came up with a good method of if you were to get a permeable glass on that bottom layer and if you put oxygen through it now oxygen keeps the the um material from curing against the glass Therefore, it cures just a little bit above the glass. So it's almost being cured in, 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 um, in like a mid state. It's just hovering there. So as you do that, it, it cures. Then you go up a level. Cure up a level. You no longer have to rip it. So when you do that, that part, go, you can build it extremely fast. And that's what Carbon is doing. And then they did the same thing as the figure four in which that one machine can be linked together. Uh, to give you a full manufacturing line and there is nothing you can make today without 3D printers or with there's nothing you can't make with 3D printers I should say I misspoke on that last one so continuing with after you get a 3D print you know going back you got all this figured out your printer which one will be best because some of the you don't get the same quality of print with everything here no 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 so when it comes to post processing the let's say anything above five thousand dollars you're not going to have to do much processing i know with the year four which is what i'm familiar with is you know you take it out 
you put it in the light box, cure box, come out, it's good to go. That's it. There is no, you might have to take off the rafts, you might have to take off the supports, but for the most part, if there's no supports or rafts, you're good to go. And how it does its rafts, it is very, very light, meaning once you rip it off, it's not much, um, it's not difficult to take off, and when you do take off, it's not going to rip other parts off. It's, it does. It's not a. Uh, it's not as cumbersome as the rep wrap printers. Sometimes we have the little small printers, and you print with the supports. The supports are hard to come off because the material just totally sticks to each other. Uh, with the higher level, you don't get that. You get a different support material, and they got higher level engineered methods of a support just coming off without affecting the surface finish. So easy as you know, untying something, rip it off, put it in the cure box. And that's it. Final part. Uh, you can see some parts here that were printed on a figure four. And print just like that. And just rip them off the base. Put the base back in. You're printing back to printing. It's just that fast. Now, a lot of other printers, especially if it's the uh, SL SLS, if it's the um, powder composite material, meaning it's, it's pretty brittle or what have you. Uh, it print, prints a pretty good surface finish. Surface finish is a bit coarse, kind of like a, um, a sand rock or something. Um, and you would have to sand that, as you can see down here. A lot of times I do have to break out the sander or the Dremel tool is a perfect tool. I say the Dremel tool is the number one tool besides hand tools. Uh, a good tool to use for fixing up your parts um, or woodworking tools. If you ever go to a woodworking shop or what have you, those little chisels, perfect for plastic parts. They kind of wood and plastic are very similar in terms of uh, post processing. So sand it, uh, chisel any sections out, drummel it, polish, paint, all that plastic or whatever material you use can handle that. And and just to rewind, I I not really go, I didn't really go over the materials that would be used, but as of today, there's like all kinds of materials, you know, between plastics, ceramics, um, flexible plastics, rubbers, um, there's all kinds of stuff. Again, metal, um, you know, various composites between them. And I can't think of any more, but if you think of any more materials, whether, you know, you know medical grade stuff. Um, especially for dentistry, so the, the and the list goes on, and they're engineering materials every day in order to go with these 3D printers. So that leads us to okay, how difficult is it to use? I have taught, I teach kids how to use 3D printers. I've taught my kids how to use our 3D printer. Now that could go all the way up to professional doctors and professionals being able to use 3D printers. And the higher end ones are just as simple to use as the lower end ones. Uh, and that's coming from me as an engineer who's used them. So don't be afraid of the 3D printer and the software. Of course, they got different settings. The uh, higher end printers have a lot more settings and a lot more options you could choose from. But the lower end makes it very, very dummy proof. But you kind of lose control. So I ran into an issue where the onboard software that came with my 3D printer could not handle printing the complex part that I wanted. So I had to download an open source uh, software to install. I probably shouldn't do that. Kiss Slicer, K-I-S-S-S-L-I-S-E-C-E-R. Um, if you're interested, I can give you that information. But that's only for the hobby end 3D printers. For the higher end, the, it comes with its own software and it will only work, work with its own software. You cannot install any open source on that higher end uh, 3D printers. But the software that it comes with is good, totally good. I, that doesn't, okay. So with all of that, the what is the latest and greatest within 3D printing? And I've spoken a lot about the uh, figure four 3D printer which is shown here. That's because it's the best printer out, uh, by far. Uh, and that's because, you know, 
SLA has been out for a while, you know, talking about 30, almost 40 years in the making. And it's actually only today that the technology has come so far that they're actually executing their original vision from the 80s. It sucked that it sucks that their patent went out a few years ago, uh, you know, before their times where they can truly uh, produce their technology. But it's here now. And I would say this is, is, is borderline Star Trek technology to where you can print things. I mean, very, very real parts, structural parts, production parts in less than an hour. Very, very complex parts with more than 20 different types of materials in less than an hour. And no, they're not a multi-material uh, machine. In this machine, there's only one material. For most of the 3D printing machines out there, the there's only one material. Sometimes you may get two, uh, but nothing more than that. You know, probably in the next 10 years, you're going to see uh, multicolor and uh, multi more multi jets, maybe multicolor with multi jets, as well as other stuff that they mix in between. Who knows? But the figure four 3D printer is, I would say, the greatest out. Um, where can you buy them? Now, like I said before, this is a collaborative effort. So, one, you could buy them from our website, New Age Nerds. I know there are a lot of other smaller 3D printing companies or 3D printing resale companies, or what have you. But having the knowledge, I, you know, what I know about the industry dealing with 3D printers, what we have is the only thing that I would buy or and I would sell. And that's the newest things out. So you have a little smaller SLA printer here. Um, I would say this will rival the Form Labs. Again, that technology is not owned specifically by one company. So there's a lot of people out here doing that. So Elago is one of them. And it is a very good machine. I have used it. I wish I had video, but I stand by this. And everything that's on our website, we stand by as experts in the industry. Now, this is a nice little small printer to get the highly fine quality parts you want, usually for figurines. Or for me, I got small little engineering parts like screws, nuts, um, a ball gear, 3D printed ball gear is what I needed. Very, very fine quality, and the plastic on here is very standard, uh, ABS-like uh, material. So, very good printer for $300. Creality is a very good company, very good manufacturer. They make a whole lot of printers, and the simplest one, the Ender 3 Pro, is usually, um, I would say, is what people should start with. As you see this globe... It kind of has, um, that's kind of like the filament. It's a two-tone two filament that kind of makes things look different after you print them, right? Now, this is a DIY kit, of course, so you can put it together. I would, I would highly recommend that uh, so that you can get the in-depth knowledge of what's inside of a 3D printer so that if anything goes wrong, you can fix it. You know what to do. You put it together. You can troubleshoot it. You can play around with it. You can do different things with it. And on this size printer, you can print a lot. It looks like you could stop the print halfway and continue it on. I've never tried it, but they advertise it. I wouldn't recommend it either. But all the parts you need here. And the instructions will be included, of course, and walk you through. And if you needed any help, I am always here to uh, serve. This is for 300. One thing I would like to note for the makers out there, especially in the next 10 years where I see the industry going, it's definitely in this, this arena here, especially on a much larger industrial manufacturing scale in which this is a three-in-one that we have. It's a 3D printer, a laser engraver, and a CNC engraving machine. Now, the bid could be a little bit bigger, but it's not. With that, you can make anything 
you could 3D print it. Um, laser engraving and most likely cutting different paper or what have you. Um, but you could print it out. Laser. That's a, covers about a, at least a good 75% of all things to make. You know, of course, size requirement, restriction, understood. Once we get bigger, we'll have that. As soon as we can offer a much larger uh, printer, we will have it on our website. Um, and we will custom make our printers coming soon. So if you have any suggestions of what you would like, let us know so that our next printers will be the next best 3D printer. Now, you can print a good size, 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters is about 5 inches by 5 inches. Um, a lot of things you can do on here. Very modern, updated look. You're not going to have a lot of those beginner issues that they had back in the 2010 era with me um, when, or when I started. Make the software is a whole lot easier to work with. The materials are a whole lot cheaper and easier to work with. So this I find is my favorite machine. A three in one would be perfect. Now, only thing other than that would be the color printer. Now, if you can get this color printer on the three in one, ooh wee! Coming soon though, coming soon. But you can do a triple color, and it's you know mixing three different filaments together to produce one nice print and it mixes it inside now I'm not sure if you can control the mix that much to be still to be determined still playing around with it but it's usually just a straight mix of whatever the three uh, filaments you put in there and it'll go from there now all of these come with all the information uh, all the things what you could do with it forgot to even talk about architectural but that's usually the obvious things that people can do with it like all of the non traditional shapes and structures can now be attained through 3d printing so there's there's the the, the, the sky's the limit of what can be produced now very high quality and if you can see on this picture here these ridges that is what I was talking about is the difference between FDM and SLA. SLA, you're not going to see anything. It's going to be one smooth, shiny part. If you choose it to be shiny, you could choose it to look like this. You know, you could set it to look very, very rough. But SL, SLA, stereolithography, is the finest quality resolution you are going to get. Now... That's just hobby printers. Again, these are just the hobby side. This is for 500. Interactive 3D is where we come in on the industrial printer side. Now, me being the salesman for the uh, 3D printing side of uh, interactive 3D, we have a lot of the 3D systems, 3D printers. And that's the Fab Pro, the Figure Four. This Figure Four standalone, which is looks just like the Next Dent, which is a Figure Four, but specifically for dentists or medical materials, what have you. But the Figure Four is the latest. It just came out last August, 2019, is when they released this machine or the, the machines and the system. Now there is only one picture for that. But if you go to the website, and even if you went to 3D Systems website, if you're in your uh, Houston or what have you, it will refer you back to 3D uh, Systems. Or not 3D Systems. It'll it refer you back to Interactive 3D. Uh, Interactive 3D is the premier or only um, 3D printer reseller or distributor for the southeast Texas region and most likely the Texas region but there may be some others out there that we don't know of but for sure in the Houston south and east area so if you need a 3d printer we are here for you now going into 3ds everything that they have is what we can offer to you and starting with the plastic which is where most people are
there's always the figure four standalone. Um, the standalone and the, the jewelry. So all of these are SLA, which is the highest quality and the highest, uh, fastest print out now. And this is our main printer that we're selling. And with all the specs you can see here, and I can offer more specs to see exactly how fast is it print. Again, four inches an hour. A lot of materials to be offered. Um, but there's a lot in to be done with here. So there's a lot to talk about, so I can't dive into the details because it's specific for each machine. For example, for jewelry makers, uh, which prints the wax needed to where you can put it in your um, the, the oven to melt that out in order to make the jewelry. The standalone is for you know solid plastic parts all the way up to you know squishy, very foamy parts rubbery parts, gummy parts, very, very hard, um, brittle parts, extremely high temperature parts. So the, the materials available are a lot. Let us know, as you can see here, it's a broad range of materials. And also metal printers, and which we've been asked about a lot of times. Now, metal printers, again, is selective lasering. And if you can see in that video, video there, that's the laser hitting that sand, which is, you know, ground up metal, hitting that and just solidifying it. Does it layer by layer by layer. And you get those nice, nice parts. Matter of fact, let's... So I can show you the part, the type of parts you can see. The, the type of parts you'll get. And again, I would have these parts in hand. They're at the... I, I would say the shop, but the uh, store, the storefront, um, and COVID has pretty much locked everything up, so I don't have anything on hand at my, in my garage. But I assure you, these parts, I mean, they're better than what you see. On the screen looks good. They hold true to what you see on the screen. Like those little, little, little intricacies and details, they are right on point. So with the the S, I mean the SLA and uh, the SLS, the stereolithography and uh, uh, selective laser centering, very very good quality because of the laser quality. You know, um, with the metal before you would always get a little rough uh, uh, patch, a little rough surface. On here, you can get a good smooth, almost like a sandy, maybe a not so much a 64 grit maybe a 128 grit type surface finish which is not too bad for a metal part as well as it can be ground smooth or uh, polished smooth on the metal parts as well so they can still uh, work with it but very very within well within five thousandths of an inch I'm not sure if the the metal printing are in the microns the SLA, the figure four, that is within four microns. So, going back, that is everything. Now, I try to cover as much but not dive into it too deep because there's a lot of fragments. Who knows what direction we would like to go? So, I know I can guide you in many, many directions. And I can help you along your path of you know, understanding the whole industry, maybe how to print something, maybe how to design something, how to prototype something, what's the best printer for what you're trying to make, or what have you. Let me know. Let me know. If, 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 if you're having issues navigating the 3D printing issue, uh, industry, I am definitely here to service. Uh, of course, for the information, I'm not charging for the information, what have you, uh, mainly became, being because I'm, I'm a hobby uh, hobbyist as well. I love... You know 3d printing I'm here to help I'm here to help so let me know reach out anytime uh, give us a call 281-345-4428 and we are here to provide you with all of your printing and prototyping needs so I'm hoping I gave you all the information uh, let me know in the uh, chat if there's any further questions did I miss anything 
Um, I see a few are still here. So I'll chill out. I see the video is still going, so you're probably listening, uh, finishing off what I'm saying. So I'll chill out for a second. So let me know if anything. So until then, peace be upon you. And, you know, well wishes on your 3D printing travels. Oh, what is STL? Okay. Stir STL. Oh, what is STL? I thought you were saying SLA. STL. I think for STL, you might be meaning um, stereolithography. So SLA and sometimes they say STL. So STL and SLA is the same thing. STL is stereolithography. SLA is uh, stereolithography. You know, the, how they did the acronym is in, who knows why, but SLA is the industry term. STL, I believe, is the file type. Whenever you're on your CAD software, I can save as a .STL. That's a stereolithography CAD file that you can put into your 3D printing program so it can print that. Now, I don't, you know, the, the technology for printing is called stereo SLA, stereolithography. So it's the same thing, but I, I can see where that confusion is. STL and SLA are both the same. They mean stereolithography, and that's this right here. Hopefully that answered. Definitely uh, appreciate you, Shri, for uh, for attending. I uh, hope I answered all your questions. I know the delay here is kind of crazy. It makes it kind of hard to communicate because you might be waiting in dead space just for you know or, uh, an answer or what have you. But you can always reach out to me. Reach out to me online, on Facebook, wherever. Just search New Age Nerds uh, and you'll find us. Or you could uh, go to the interactive website. You'll find us. So, and I can provide, I have your email, and I will provide you with this presentation in your email. I uh, will put it in PDF format to make it easier for you to open up.